Glory, 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 35. be thankful for. He is always there for us. You know, just I, one been on my uh, mind all day long is Psalm 42. That, that's been on just on my heart today. And Psalms 42, a couple, few verses out of it. As the heart pants and longs for the water brooks, so I pant and long for you, O God. This amplified verse. My inner self thirsts for God for the living God, when shall I come and behold the face of God? My tears have been my food day and night, while men say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I earnestly remember and pour myself out within me. How I went slowly before the throng and led them in procession to the house of God, like a bandmaster before his band, tying the steps to sound of music and a chant of a song with a voice of shouting and praise. Oh, hallelujah, a throng keeping festival. We think, but why are you cast down on my inner self? Why should you moan over me and be disquieted within me? Hope in God. Wait expectantly for him, for I shall yet praise him, my help and my God. We just got to think about that. That just been on my heart, to, that God loves us. And when we pour out our heart and our life to him, do you see how many times he moves in your life when you surrender? You know, we sang that song, I surrender all. I surrender all. A pastor once told me, he said, don't sing that song unless you mean it. Right. You know, that you surrender, you give God your whole life. That's where things start really changing. When there is nothing between you and God. There is nothing. That you have an openness, a conduit that we can reach up. That our prayers, we know that our prayers just don't reach up to the ceiling, that they go up to the throne. And we can go right to the throne room of God. To, I, just, I just get awed by God every day. Think about all the miracles. I was talking to a lady, they had to do a little business over lunch. And you know, we was talking about Thanksgiving because I wouldn't see them until after Thanksgiving. I said, it's sad that we look at Thanksgiving as one day. And she says, yes, because when I get up every morning, I'm thankful. Mm -hmm. I am blessed. And she got it. She understood that it's not one day. It should be a heart's cry every day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, one thing about it is that, you know, I, I just, I've been trying to do this more and more. It's nothing wrong with going to ask God for things. You know, that's nothing. You know, he rewards those who diligently seek him. 
There's nothing wrong, but I'm telling you, it, it really makes a difference if you just go to God, spend some time, and just thank Him. Thank Him. Not asking for nothing, but just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings you've given yes. me. Thank you that I got a food in my cupboard. Yes. Thank you I got a car to get to work. Thank you that I have a job. Thank you I have a clothes. Thank you I have kids. You know, thank you for all those things he's given you. That's why it's on count your blessings. Mm -hmm. Count your blessings. How many blessings do you have on a daily basis? Mm -hmm. You know, just think it because sometimes, <clears throat> you know, we get down and, well, I don't have this. I don't have, but what do you have? Uh -huh. think, why don't you think about that I don't have this I'd like to have this it says God understands all that but the Bible says seek ye first not second third not one A not one B one seek ye first yes. put it above all that seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things God understands all these other things yes. but you know there's only one God and he don't share his worship with anybody it's only one God, the true and mighty God, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Lord. King of kings, Lord of lords. Yes. Uh, we want to go ahead and open this time up. And uh, we definitely want to keep praying for Pastor. Yes. You know, that's not able to be here tonight with us. And we open it up. And I just uh, appreciate prayers for our family. I appreciate prayers for our kids. You know, we, we always want to just keep believing. If they're not where they should be in the Lord, don't ever give up on them. Yep. Never give up on them. Because you don't know who at this moment is talking to them about the Lord. You don't know who's praying for them right now. I mean, the greatest prayer you can ever pray is for your kids to get touched by God. Yes, Lord. You know, and when you get that phone call, guess, Daddy, what I did today. I gave my heart to the Lord. What else? Hallelujah. Yeah. Because you know in the glory you'll be spent forever and ever. Yeah. And you know that that is powerful to know. You know that your kid prayed. Your grandchildren pray. I remember my grandson one time, he gave his heart to the Lord out, out there at uh, West Coast. And his mom did a smart thing because he, he felt that God was tugging him. That I want to go down, mommy. I want to go down. But she said, it's your choice. Because it wanted, wanted to be you. I'm not forcing you down there. Uh, Your choice. So my oldest grandson, he walked down the aisle and gave his heart to the Lord. And you know what? He came back and told his mom. He said, you know what, mommy? My heart doesn't hurt anymore. Mm -hmm. huh? Now, is that powerful stuff? Yes. That's real. Hollywood can't fake that. Because that, that's real stuff right there. Because God always works from the inside out. To draw that little kid. See, I, I, I don't have a problem with, you know, if somebody can, gets converted on a deathbed. There's, there's not a problem with that, you know, because they still get saved. But can you imagine? You get somebody that's saved at four or five years old and lives a life to their 80. How many lives they can touch during that time, you know? I mean, that is powerful. You know, the, the best testimony I used to love when I was at church, you had uh, the, the women that have been in church for years and years and years. You know, and they're still praising God. You come back 20 years later and they're still in the church praising God. Yeah. They're still lifting their hands up, praise the Lord, yeah. you know, and they, they pray for it. Now they got kids, grandkids, great kids, but I still pray for them. I still pray for you. You know, God puts you on my heart, Tim, and you know, it's been a long time to see you. How you doing? How's the Lord? I said, praise the Lord, you know, because I was saved under their ministry a lot of time. We look at the pastor. You know, as the leader of the church, but oh man, you need those people in the in the pews that just pray, that just pray. That was their ministry. God gave them just to pray constantly, because there is a warfare out there. Yeah. But just to pray and pray and pray and be there to back that pastor up. It's like Aaron and her. You know, when Moses had his arms up, they won the battle. You know, your arms get heavy, but you needed people on the side of them hold them up. Keep holding the arms up. And that's what we always need to do with our pastor and those in the ministry. Just hold them up. Hold them up. You know, because they need that. Yeah. They need that. Everybody can get down and, and, and fluctuate. But, oh, I tell you what, when you lock arms, when you lock arms and say, you know what, I'm hanging in there with you, brother. Yes, Lord. Okay, I believe in you, brother. I tell you what, that's powerful. That's why when God puts somebody on your heart to call him or pray for him, do it. I may not know what the battle they're going through, but I'm telling you that sometimes that phone call can make all the difference in the world. 
You know, he says, man, I was just on this verge of giving up. But your phone call told me to hang in there. Come on. So you know what I'm doing? I'm hanging in there. And God will bless you. God will bless you. Prayer requests. Praises. Hallelujah. I just want to uh, pray for Suzanne. She's not feeling so well. She's, just, oh, okay. she's really worn out. I mean, last night's drive back from... <clears throat> Iowa City was late at night and didn't get home until you know, after 12 and stuff, but her job is just running her, running her ragged and she's feeling it tonight. So okay. just look her up. Definitely yeah. will. Pray for Suzanne. Yeah, my Cindy's name. over in Iowa City. She did some more uh, oral, oral slash dental work, uh, work done and stuff. She's done with that. Everything went well. Visiting uh, uh, her granddaughter over there and then heading back. So safe trip back tonight. Okay. Definitely we'll pray. Definitely we'll pray. Okay. Anyone else have prayer requests or praises? Okay. Not can we stand for a prayer? Oh Father God, we thank you tonight. Because you're still God above all. Hallelujah. Lord, that we lift these requests up to you tonight. Suzanne, Lord, that you would just touch her life, Lord. I know the body can get weary, Lord. Just touch her, Lord. We thank you for how she is to this body of Christ, how much she means to us. Be with Cindy over in Iowa City. They uh, uh, had the, the medical issues over there and, and be giving them travel mercies as they come back. Be with Pastor, Lord. Touch him. Lord, thank you for our church, Lord. Thank you for who you are, Lord. Just, oh, Father God, and we pant after you. We want to see, get closer and closer and closer. But Lord, we thank you for living inside of us. Oh, hallelujah. We thank you created us in your image, Lord. Your image that we can got a voice that we can lift our praises up. We got arms we can lift up to you in praise. Oh, Lord, we want to thank you because you are such a good God. Hallelujah. All the blessings you give us. Let us have a thankful heart every single day. Maybe things don't go the way that we like them to go. But one thing about it, God, you are still God no matter what. And Father God, I ask you to be with us tonight as we take this time in the middle of the week to meet with you. And you meet with us. Lord, we want to thank you and praise you because you're such a wonderful God. You're such a great God. Lord, where would we be without you? Hallelujah. Because you loved us while we were yet sinners, while we were away from you. You still loved us. You loved us with an everlasting love. And we want to praise you tonight. We want to give you the glory in your wonderful holy name. Your wonderful holy name, we pray amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Um, this announcement, uh, if you have your cell phone, please turn it off. Put on vibrate this Sunday. Be soup dinner um, after the service. So have a sign-up sheet if you haven't already signed up. And uh, is it time to praise the Lord? Let's praise the Lord. Offering. We'll take the offering first. Okay, uh, Brother Ron, would you come up? Father, just thank you. Yes, sir. Your word honestly, truly says you are good and your mercy endures forever. And Lord, we experience that. We taste it and see Lord, yes. I thank you for your presence. Thank you for moving your spirit here. I thank you that you will open up our understanding of things we need in order to receive this time and place. God, I just want to bless this offering in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Ron. All right, be seated and then we'll start the praise. Yes, yes, sir.
Glory. Glory. Perfect. Hallelujah.
verse in the Old Testament that I can't shake. It was revealed months ago that the river of God may <coughs> receive his, his uh, water. But as I was at the prayer gathering, preparing for the gather, prayer gathering last weekend, the Lord was showing me how things are beyond the river where provision comes forth. And then being by the river brings adoration where we see the, the goodness and the, and, the, and the beauty of the Lord coming forth. And then being in the river. presence of the Lord, and then the flowing of the river, flowing out of us, is the passion, the heart of Christ. But in the middle of this, as the Lord was giving me his words on these things, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Let's give him a hand clap. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'd like to thank the worship team. Always uh, grateful for them. Uh, the time that they put in, I just want to thank you. Thank you all so much. Tonight, I just want to praise the Lord. Thank Him for all that He's done for us tonight. One of the things that when I ever have an opportunity, uh, you know, uh, often and anytime I get a chance to come up here and be before you, um, a preacher once told me, says, Tim, whenever you get a chance to pre preach, always preach what's big in you. I always preach what's big in you. And one of the things that's been big in me is just being thankful. Just being thankful. How many times has God delivered you? How many times that has he uh, done so many things for you? Just as we look at as time is in the nick of time. You know, we think about it. So one, one day I was thinking about, <clears throat> and the two words came to me to use when this opportunity came out. But God, that's it. But God, how many times has he come through when you didn't think it was any way possible, but God. So I like to look up words and that little word, but, you know, a lot of people use that a lot, but it means he's used to eat, introduce something contrasting with what has already been mentioned. That is powerful. You know, because when we think about it, and some of the synonyms are yet, nevertheless, nonetheless, however, God came through. And that's what we got to look at. Psalms 124, and I'm reading out an amplified version, said, I love how this starts off. Because it's absolutely a place that we've probably all been to. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, hallelujah. You ever been there? Yes. You know, you know, if the Lord hadn't been on our side, we would have never got through. Yes. Hallelujah. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they would have quickly swallowed us up alive when the wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters would have overwhelmed us and swept us away. The torrent would have gone over us. Then the proud waters would have gone over us. <clears throat> but I love this. Verse 6. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us to pray to their teeth. We are like a bird escaped from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. This is it. This is really the key. I think when we look at this verse. Our help. Is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. That's where it's at. That's exactly where it's at. You, you think about, you know, people's lives in the Bible. You know, and, and you, you think about Joseph. That I was reading that and then a the guy came on the radio was talking about Joseph. The, the thing about Joseph, we, we know the story. You know, they kept saying, here comes a dreamer. And, you know, he, he had these dreams and, and about them having to bow down and the sun and the moon and all that. And all this, you know, it irritated you know, all of his brothers. And, you know, when he was thrown in the pit. And, and you know, it, it's terrible that a person can get that hateful toward an individual. And then they didn't want to kill him. They thought, well, let's, let's make money off of him. And, they, and, they, and, and, and you look further in, in Genesis where, you know, we, we kind of think Joseph is this character that just all the stuff that happened to Joseph, he was good with it. That wasn't it at all. Because the Bible taught that he was pleading with his life when he was down in that pit. But often and often, so many times through David, uh, jo uh, Joseph's life, the Lord was with him. You kept seeing that all, when he was in Potiphar's house, when, you know, but the Lord blessed Potiphar's house because of Joseph, you know, and then we know the accusation he was thrown in jail and then the jailer, when he was in jail, he became the jailkeeper, right? And the Lord was with him constantly. And at the end of his life, the best testimony, the, the, the brothers came and, and you can see that there's some change in their life. And, you know, they, they thought they did this horrible thing. And they're going to get rid of them. See what becomes of your dreams. 
But Joseph, tenderhearted, says, you know, you guys didn't send me here. God sent me here. Now it looked dark and it looked and it looked so evil, but you know, God turned around. That's why, and, and we let's let's look at Romans 8. Let's look at Romans 8, because that's when that scripture really comes to light. Let's look at Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. That's when you can see how that works. <clears throat> now again, I'm, I'm going to read out of the Amplified Bible. This is Romans 8, 28. And we know that scripture, but it works in so many times in people's lives. Romans 8, 28. And again, this is, I'm going to read out, this is a King James, New King James. And we know that all things. Now, let's look at that word all. Did it say some things or a few things? It says all things work together for good to those who love God. To those who are the called according to his purpose. Then let me expand a little bit. This is the Amplified Version. I like the Amplified Version because they, they bring out a little bit more. I love this. We are assured and know that God's being partnered in their labor. All things working together are fitting into a plan. We've got to really realize that. For good for those who love God and are called according to his design and purpose. Right? Nobody's life is created in vain. Right. You know, one of the worst things I think people say to people sometimes, well, you know, you'll never amount to nothing. Don't ever say that. How do you know that? That's right. How do you know what God has in store for them? You know, you think about Naaman, the servant girl, when, when, when Naaman had leprosy, she said, hey, you know what? You know, and if she's a servant girl, she could have kept her mouth shut. You know, she probably wasn't happy serving all the time, you know, being a servant or slave. But you know what? She says, wait a minute. The man of God, if you could just get to the man of God, he could deliver you from this because he knows God. See, that's what she could have just kept her mouth shut, not said nothing. He says, you know, she was concerned about him. That's what it takes. You know, we think about in the Bible when, when blind Bartimaeus and <clears throat> he heard all this commotion going, who's that? Who's that? Who's that coming down the road? He couldn't see Jesus. Oh, you know, a lot of times, you know, they, they want to keep people quiet. Well, I'm not going to keep quiet when it comes to Jesus. Yes. Because I know, son of David, son of David, I know that if I could reach out, if he stopped and he stopped, and look, you know, that's what happens when Jesus stops. And he, he it's almost like that, you know, when you think about the woman with the issue of blood. She kept, it's, it's that pushing through that makes a difference. It's that pushing through. I'm not going to stop crying out because that's my God over there. Uh -huh. And nothing should keep you from God. Right. Nothing should keep you from God. Uh -huh. Family, friends, and oh, you don't, you don't know what, Tim. You, you better not get too radical. You know, you're getting too radical because you're shouting. Well, let me tell you, I got something to shout about. Come on. Because I know where I came from. Yeah. That's what makes all the difference. You know, that's one thing we should never, ever forget where we came from. And I guarantee you, Joseph never forgot that. Joseph never forgot that. Those days in the pit and the things, I'm sure he's missing his, his family. But you know what? And he realized, no, wait a minute. You thought it for bad. But God, God had it for good. Uh -huh. See, you, you can't stop God's plan. They noticed that in, in Acts. You know, when they say, oh, you can't preach in Jesus' name, throw them in jail. Right. You know, next thing you know, they're out. They're preaching again. Well, you can't stop it. Your man will say, wait, wait, wait. If, if it's not of God, you know, it's, it's going to end. We think about the other guys that came along. But you can't, if it's a God, you can't stop it. Happily, you fight against God, you can't do it. Because it's going to keep going and going. We talk about a river, and the river is us, where it flows through us. I'm telling you what, yeah. when you see somebody excited about yeah. God, when you see, we, we, went to, we went to Subway one night, and <clears throat> there was a, a lady in there, and that's always impressive when they share their faith. You know, when she was in Subway, sharing their faith. You know, so she was less concerned about the sandwich and more concerned about their souls, you know, because she realized that's what makes all the difference. You may never walk that way again and see those people in there. You may never have that divine appointment. <clears throat> How many times have you seen that guy? And, you know, God put it on your heart to go talk to that person. 
You know it was God. <clears throat> I know I, I, I shared this before, but this was probably the biggest transition in my life was to do that. Just for total stranger and go pray for him. I was young in the Lord, you know, you feel kind of, you, you, you have it inside and you know it's God. And I never forget, <clears throat> I was out in the East Coast, my truck, and, and I was with another driver, and this young lady came in there, and the way she walked, she had cerebral palsy. I never forget, because this changed my whole life. You could tell the way she walked in there, and, and the Lord just put on my heart, Ted, you need to go over and pray for that young lady. Come on. You need to go. I mean, it kept kept burning inside of me. And I told the, the, the other driver I was with, and he says, man, I, I really feel the Lord wants me to pray for that young lady. And and uh, he said, well, Tim, you know what you got to do? Do what the Lord tells you to do. The sooner you do it, the better off you are. Because if you just keep kind of stuffing it down, it's going to come back up. You got to do it. So I just kind of waited and I waited for the right moment. Well, they ate, and their dad, I saw, you know, he came in with them, and I assumed that was his, her dad. So I went up to him and said, sir, I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry to bother you. Is that your daughter? He says, yes, it is. And, you know, he could have said, well, you kind of nut or something. You know? he, is, he said, yes, that's, that's my daughter. Well, sir, I just feel the Lord wants me to pray for her right now. And he just kind of looked at me, and, you know, he says, thank you, young man. We just got back from a revival in Florida, and we brought her up there, and they prayed for her. Okay? I said, okay. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that, and I'll keep praying. I did as much as I could do <clears throat> at that time. But you know what, what that did? It just didn't stop at that moment. I remember so excited. At least I was obedient to what God had me do. And that's what he talks about. God wants you to be willing and obedient, either the fat or the land. You got to be willing and obedient. You know, because some people are obedient, but they ain't very willing. You know, uh, uh, Jonah's one of those cases, you know. You know, he ended up doing it, but he wasn't very willing, you know. And, and he had to go through stuff he wouldn't have to go through with the well experience if he had just done what God asked him to do. Uh -huh. And I remember I, I went into a, 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 a drugstore out there, and there was a lady behind me. Again, I didn't know her. I was out in East Orange, New Jersey. Didn't know her. But again, the Lord put on my heart. Ask that woman behind you if she would pray for that young lady too. And, you know, I, I, I learned from that first experience. I'm going to just do what the Lord asked me to do. Yes. And I turned to the lady and said, excuse me, ma'am. You praying, lady? said, yes, I am. Now, you know, again, she could say, you're kind of a nut. Why are you even asking me that? She didn't say that. Yes, I am. She didn't hesitate. Said, would you mind praying for this young lady? She's got cerebral palsy. Just, just met her a while back. Would you, would you pray for her? Sure will. Now, how did God orchestrate that? That that woman was behind me at that time in, in history, right there behind me. Uh -huh. Instead of somebody that slapped me or done something else, you, you know, called the police. But you know what? That God can put the right people together at the right time. Amen. This is what we should never forget. When we look at that verse, how that, let, let's, let's go back to Romans 8. I want to go back to that. <clears throat> Roman 8 28 yep. and on <clears throat> and, and I'm getting I'm gonna read this out of the amplified again. We are sure to know that God being partnered in labor, all things work together are fitting into a plan for good to and for those who love God are called according to his design and purpose. For those whom he foreknew of, whom he was aware and loved beforehand. He also destined from the beginning for ordaining them to be molded into the image of his son and share inwardly his likeness that he might become the firstborn among many brethren. And this is verse 30. And those whom he thus foreordained, he also called. Those whom he called, he also justified, acquitted, made righteous, putting them into a right standing with himself. And those whom he justified, he also glorified, raised them to a heavenly dignity, condition of state of being. Verse 31, what then should we say to all of this? If God is for us, who can be against us? Oh, hallelujah. Who can be our foe if God is on our side? Amen. That's what we have to realize and not forget this. Hallelujah. Oh, what then should we say to this thing? If God is for us, who can be against us? Nobody can. 
Right. See, once you're on the winning side, stay on the winning side. One of the biggest things that, 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 that kind of get us down is we tend to forget what God has done for us in the past. See, the Old Testament saints, they understood that. So, so at this point, I'm going to build a monument to what God has done. So if I pass this way, I'd always remember. Y'all tell you, it's, it's good to write down what God, the pray, prayers he's answered. To remember them. What God has brought you through. <clears throat> now, if God brought you through this situation, A, what makes you think he won't bring you through situation B? What makes you think? Satan loves to think, oh, I don't know. He, he, I don't know if he's going to come through this time. I don't know. Well, you know, Satan, I believe God. And that's really where it's got to come at. Because sometimes we get so worried. You know, Jesus put in that, said, we don't need to be worried about all these things. You know, you're, you're always going to, you know, you, you, got, you got bill payments. You got all these things. You know, they just keep going on. Your utility bill comes around every month. You got all these things. But you know what's most important is to realize, you know what? I got a God that's bigger than those things. So many times, you know, God puts on my heart, you know what, Tim? You know, sometimes we pay, pray really small prayers, and it's almost like we keep God in a little small container. And we got to realize God's a big God. Amen. Why don't we ask him for big things? Big things that, that, that only you know it's God could do that. Only God could do that. And sometimes we just get odd because we know it can only have been God. You know, I, I deal with traffic and I deal with all those things. And I know seconds here, seconds there can make a difference in my life. I understand that. I see it when I go home. I see it when I, as I'm teaching that and realize if it's not for God, you know, a second sooner, five minutes sooner. You know, a, a car that ran the light, if we'd been up there, you know, we could have got T-bone. So many times, whether it was in the hospital, whether it was this, that they caught your diagnosis in time. Well, I'll tell you what, oh man, it, you know, it is awful to have some of those diagnoses. But we got a God bigger than that. Amen. We got a God that his name is above every name. What is that name? He's above cancer. You know, he, he loves eye disease. He, he just does all those conditions because the Bible said he's a God that healeth me. And how many times when Jesus went around healing, he healed all their diseases. So many times he healed them all because he understood, you know, that the woman that was bowed down, it's time to raise her up. The withered hand, oh, you can't do it. You can't do it on Sabbath day. Is he going to do it or not? But, and, and it's like sometimes you just, I just, like if you look at Jesus' face, it's like, will you guys just leave him? Just leave him alone. Okay? Don't, whether you do it on the Sabbath day or not, the fact is he wants to be made whole. Don't you take care of your animals? Don't you go out and water them? You know? I mean, some of that stuff is just so ridiculous. And it's so many times, it's just like, I, I just feel like Jesus' heart where he just said, only thing I want you guys to do is just believe me. <clears throat> you remember when, when, when the disciples on the boat and Jesus was down there sleeping? That, that is such a picture of humanity. Because here's Jesus. He's in the boat. <laughs> He's in the boat with you. What makes you think you're not going to get to the other side when Jesus is in the boat with you? Uh -huh. Now with us, how much closer can he get when he's inside of you? Come on, okay? Can't get much closer than that. <laughs> now, now he's sleeping. Now they were fishermen, so they understand. They understand storms. But there was something about this storm they didn't like. See, I've been in snowstorms, and I know the difference between a snowstorm and a snowstorm, uh, right? I've been driving there. You know, I understand that. And this storm was big enough where they said, you know, one of us needs to go down and wake Jesus up. Now, I'm telling you what, when you're about ready to die, nobody's going to go down and tap Jesus on the shoulder uh, and say, please get up. That, you know that didn't happen. They probably elected Peter because he always was talking the most. You know, Peter go down and wake him up. You know, and they go down there. Hey, Jesus, hey, Jesus we're about ready to perish up here. We come up here and do something. <clears throat> now, it's interesting to note, Jesus didn't say anything about being disturbed. You ever notice that? <laughs> he didn't. He said, why? Well, I, I really don't appreciate you guys waking me up. I was sleeping pretty good, you know. There's none of that. It's like, hey, wait a minute. You could have done this. I can rebuke you. See, if you only believe, you understand? If you just believe, who did you have on 
from the boat, the creator. The one that started this all, okay? Man, if he's on your team, you know, <clears throat> when we was picking sides, you know, for playing baseball or, or basketball, whatever he was playing, you know, you tend to pick the best athletes, right, first. You know, you always did. Then you kind of got left to the ones you had to pick. We know how that all went. We know that. But you know what? You want to pick that guy that you had the best chance of winning the game. Right? That's really the reality what it was. Right? Well, Jesus is the star of the team. Think about that. When he tells the stars, think about everything created by him for him. So it's created. Right? So he created the stars and said, you know what? Stars, tell you what. You stay there until I tell you otherwise. He said, you're going over here. Moon, you're going over here. Earth, you're going to all these planets. Think about that type of individual. That, that spirit that surrounds you. Yeah. You know, that, I mean, that's on your side. Think about that. Yeah. And we get worried that he won't come through. Come Next on. time you go, go to the... I went out to Gray's Lake and there were some things going on in my life. And I noticed the shoreline. I was just watching the water coming in and out. You know what? The water stopped here. Yeah. It didn't come rushing. It didn't come and take me out. You know, it just stopped here. And it, I, it was a, it was a, the sun was coming up and I kept watching that shoreline and go out and, come, and it would stop here. And I thought, that's it. It's like God said, no more. You're going to stay here. Yep. Now we serve a God that powerful. And what God wants us to do, folks, is just that. And realize if we end up being in a pit like Joseph, if all that stuff is going around us and it looks like <clears throat> there's no way I'm coming out of this. Yeah, there's always a way. You know why? Because Jesus himself says it. I am the truth, the way, the life. So that's the way to go. You know, Isaiah does talk about that. You know, you hear that voice. Hear what he said. If you go to the left, hey, I need you to go to the right. Listen to what God is saying. So many times we do pray to God after the fact. Instead of praying him before the fact. If we would just say, God, should I live here? Should I take this job? Should I be married to this person? Should I buy this car? How many times that would keep us out of so much trouble? Uh -huh. But we do it the opposite way. We go ahead and make a decision, and then after that, we ask God to bless it. Well, you know, you kind of got this backwards. Why don't you pray first? And God can tell you. He can tell you exactly where to work at. Because He knows you need an income, but you know, maybe there's somebody at that business that you need to talk to about Jesus Christ. Yes. That, that he sent you and brought you together because he know that your personality and that personality there is going to mesh. I work with an individual like that. One day we did have a discussion and he passed away. I only worked there for <clears throat> about a year and a half, but he ended up passing away. I remember, you know, he, I worked with him that day and that night he was gone. But I did have that opportunity to share with him. See, we, we don't know why God brings us together like that. Except that God is always concerned about souls. He's always concerned about people's lives. Yes. Who did he die for? You know, he died for us. Think about that. You know, we, we, we don't sing that song a whole lot, but we used to sing it a lot <clears throat> back, in the, back in the 80s. And I love that song. You know, when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. I love that. Think about that. Think about how Jesus died. I, I remember a lady telling me that, and I just never, never got it. Says, Tim, do you realize, how did Jesus die on the cross? Like this, with his arms open. You ever notice that? This is where he died. See, I'm here for you. I was willing. It's, you think about, <clears throat> you think about when, when uh, Abraham took Isaac, and he, and he was out in the wilderness, and he's going to sacrifice him. And I always thought about that scene because he was willing to bring the knife down, right? Yep. You know? Then wait, wait. I know you held nothing from me. There's a ram in the thicket. You know? No, I don't want you to sacrifice your son. You was willing to do that. But I got a ram to take his place, right? So, but I thought years down the line, you know, God's looking at that. There'll be one day that I'm going to be the lamb. My son, Jesus Christ. Think about that. That there, there's not going to be a ram in the thicket. Because that was 
the Lamb of God right there that was slain for us. Mm -hmm. And he was willing. That, that was a tough situation because you're in the garden. You know, he's in the garden. And I mean, you're wrestling with all the sins past, present, and future. You know, and he said, if there's any other way, let this cup pass by me. If there's any other way, then he surrendered. That was the difference. Yeah. He was willing to surrender. Not my will, but yours. And that's what God wants. And sometimes we got to do that more than once. Uh -huh. Say, God, hey, I don't understand what's going on, but I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you with everything within me. That you know what's best. You sleep in the boat, and you're with me. So no matter what the storms raise, you are with me. And that's what we can never forget. Every single day of our life, never forget that God is with you. Yeah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Father God, we thank you tonight yeah. that we come and share this word. That one thing we really, if it wasn't for you on our side, what would have happened to us? We know it was all you. And if you say, Lord, we're going to get to the other side, hallelujah, Lord, we're going to get to the other side. Because we got the King of kings, the Lord of lords with us. Yes, Lord. Father God, we ask you to continue to, to, to just work in our life to stir us up. Stir us up. Yes. Those gifts that we may be used for your glory. Yes, Lord. Because, Lord, it is all about you. In your kingdom. Yes. And Lord, we ask you to watch over each and every one of us as we go to our homes. Be safe and, and make the travels good so we can return back here. Yes. And Lord, we thank you for this time tonight. We got to worship and praise you. And we're going to give you all the glory, all the praise. In your wonderful holy name, we pray amen and amen. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Glory. Glory. Amen. You're dismissed.